Right. So, Dr. Kobra Donko, help us understand the relocation of this part of Ameri to that part of the region. What exactly does it do to the power generation situation? Well, it doesn't add to generation, but there is a rule for it. It stabilizes the grid. It enables grid code to reduce its transmission losses, etc. Remember, in 2014, the government then decided that we needed generation in the middle belt. This was done in 2014. And so uh, we worked on it 2014-2015. Unfortunately, at the time, the major challenge was fuel. The, a gas pipeline had gotten to Pristia on the way to Nginehim, but there wasn't a gas pipeline to Kumasi. Mm. And therefore, the physical relocation at the time would not have made sense without fuel. Fortunately, unfortunately, the people of Ghana decided that we should leave the scene. So there was a truncation of the process. Other than that, generation in the middle corridor would have happened earlier than it has done. So yes, there is some advantage. In fact, there is an advantage in having generation in the middle corridor. Yeah. As we speak, Greco owes VRA simply because the transmission losses on Greco lines are higher than what has been approved by the PURC. And so when you move generation closer to a market, you limit the amount of transmission losses. So there is an economic benefit in that. It also helps stabilize the grid. You see, there is a certain balance that the grid must have. If you have a situation where, until now, we have the eastern and western corridors in terms of generation, and even then, there is a delicate balance. You cannot overgenerate from one corridor with nothing coming from the other. The grid will trip. So there is a certain, the national interconnected transmission system, there's a certain balance needed. So having generation in the central corridor will help that. Hmm. Maybe we should quickly now speak about the question of cost. And renaming can be you know, a lighter issue to the end. I don't know how some of your people perceive it. Now, we are told that the deputy CEO of of the of the of the, of the uh, Volta River Authority, um, Engineer Edward Echo or Bing Kenzo, in charge of operations. That last year or sometime thereabout, he met with members of Parliament, and he had indicated that the cost of relocating it would be around uh, twenty-four or so. Um, million US. And then subsequently, he updated that by uh, some work that had been done, it had become obvious that the cost would be 38 million instead of the 24 million US dollars. What do you say about that? You see, it is difficult talking about the cost in abstraction. First of all, I haven't been to the site since uh, they initiated the installation. I will have to see what the balance of plants is there. If it's just the transportation, the civil works, then I will say it's a bit on the higher side because at a, I have been informed that at a point the ministry wanted the private sector contractor to do the relocation at a cost lower than the 38 that is being quoted. But until you see the works, exactly what was done, it will be unprofessional 
with, for example, the Angoma suicide. It's not just for Mary. Kappa has to has been contracted to set up some other power plant there by this government in the midst of the allegations of SS power. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, there is the expectation of future generation. I heard the minister talking about 800 megawatts generation in that corridor. It is futuristic. So if the works, especially the balance of plants, is meant, it's been oversized to meet all that, that will be another thing. But I don't have that information, so I don't, uh, I'm for, so I don't want to pretend right. that with that information, I can say it is high or low. It is important we, we, we do It's that. become an issue because the minority has given a hint that they, they intend to investigate the cost because they have suspicions that it cannot be 38 million US dollars. That, that will be perfect. You see, like I said, I don't have the details. And if an investigation will bring out the details, we must fight for value for money, irrespective of who is in power. If a forensic investigation or a technical investigation is conducted, and I would call for that. Right. If it's conducted and it says, yes, give or take 5 10%, it's within range, or it's excessive, then we have a basis to hold people accountable. Right. We know that our Mary plant is movable, right? That's why it was able to, to they were able, it was, uh, government was able to move it. So six of the ten, the plants. Units. Units to uh, the Ashanti region. Did you have any such plans? You remember in 2015 when we were being lambasted, left, right, and center of our Mary. One of the arguments in my memo to parliament was that the American plant was modular. There are 10 units of 25 megawatts each. So if there is the need to move generation, emergency in it, to any part of the country, it can be moved. Unlike the existing plants we have, if you take the G frame nines, there are 110 megawatts each, two of them or one at a place. So these ones, that was one of the positive things we said about the plant when it was being uh, negotiated. So for, we foresaw a situation where in the national interest it could always be moved. Mm -hmm. Let me take the opportunity to also address this once and for all. Um, a young, or the chairman of the Bawumia Energy Manifesto Group came out with some write-up claiming that uh, we should the plant should have been purchased at $290 million, and we had gone to contract it for $510 million. It is the height of naivety to put at that position. First of all, assuming without admitting that the units, if you put them together, they will cost $290 million, as he was claiming. In an emergency, there's a lead time, a long lead time, if you go and place an order with General Electric for them. There's a long lead time. Remember, this was an emergency plant. That is one. Two, the units alone, without the balance of plant, just as I was talking about, the balance of plant is another major cost item, has to be added to it. Then three, and more importantly, if you are doing a build, own, operate, and transfer. It's like work and pay. And the average Ghanaian will understand that the taxi driver, if you pick a car, you are buying the car on work and pay. And by the time you finish paying for the car or the vehicle, the cost may be double what you would have paid if you had the money to buy it outright. The Ghanaian state didn't have the money to purchase it outright. And therefore, somebody says, I am buying it with all the finance costs, with all the interest. And then when you finish paying, of course, you won't pay. Anyone who has taken a mortgage knows that if a property is $80 million and you are taking a mortgage, 
by the time you finish paying for that property, you are likely to have paid double the signature price. So this is just simple, common sense. And let me add this. This is the only plant. We've had the Tico plant in this country for over 20 years. It's never become ours. We've had Sonona Sogli and other private plants in the country longer than we've had Ameri. None of them has become ours. But through this boot, innovative boot arrangement, the plant is now ours for zero CDs. And so we can then decide to take it wherever we want to the extent that we even decide that, okay, we want you to even change the name. 